Hey there and welcome back to my channel. I'm a commercial pilot, an advanced ground instructor and a CFI in California. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how you can become a pilot in the United States. Do you want to become a pilot? If the answer is yes, you've come to the right place. And if you want to become a pilot in the US, then this is the video for you. If you are still debating if you should do your pilot training in India or abroad, I have a video for you. It's my Q&A video, the first one. I will have it linked in the iCard right here and in the description box so you can check that out if you're still in that dilemma. But before we get started, consider hitting that subscribe button down below, it's that big red button, and hit that notification bell right next to it. I post a lot of aviation content, including aviation motivation videos, and you should definitely check those out. They are so inspiring, you will go out of this channel very, very inspired to become a pilot. Now that being said, let's get into this video. Come on! First and foremost, this is the biggest tip for you. Start early. Don't wait until you finish your 12th to start applying. Start looking for flight schools, research, find and apply as soon as you can while you're still doing your 11th or 12th. They will usually accept you before you have your 12th grade transcript. So don't worry about that at all. Just start applying because the finding and the researching will take a long time and other than that the application the visa these take a few months too so do yourself a favor and start doing this as soon as you can i have been where you are right now looking for the school where i should be studying and the finances and everything and i get so many comments from you guys saying you cannot pursue your aviation dreams because of finances and trust me i know how it feels so I have created Avion. Avion is where you can start training for your pilot's license while you are still at home. And obviously I had to make it at the cheapest cost possible. Through Avion, you can finish your private pilot ground school while you're still at home. So if you're coming to the US to do your pilot training, here's how your private pilot certificate will go. You will have to do 35 hours of ground and 35 hours of flight. Since you'll be doing in part 141, these are your minimums. And for you to complete this, it'll take you a long time. So what we are doing here in Avion is taking these 35 hours of ground, finishing them before you can come into the US. So you will be saving so much money. And because this is being given to you in less than half the cost that it would cost you in the US, you're saving so much money. Additionally, you will be saving thousands of dollars on living expenses because you will be doing this online from home. Thousands of dollars. So once you get this out of the way and you're only left with 35 hours of flight minimums, your training will go so much faster and you will be far, far ahead of everybody else in your batch because you only have flight left and you will get credit for every single hour you spend in Avion for your pilot license in the US. So, this is the best thing you can do for yourself. Go to joinavion.com to find out more and to apply right now to book a seat for the next batch so you can stay ahead of everybody else and do it at the cheapest price possible. Find us at joinavion.com. The link is in the description bar as well. And you can also find us on Instagram at joinavion. My next tip for you guys is to take physics and math in your 11th and 12th. This is not a requirement for the US, but in India, they do require you to have physics and math and completed your 11th and 12th with physics and math. So do yourself a favor and take physics and math while you're doing your high school. But if you haven't taken it and you've already finished your high school, nothing to worry about. You can definitely take an equivalency exam and that'll be waved off completely. So don't worry, but if you can still take it, just take it, it'll be easier. Next thing we need to think about is finances. While you're still in school, start thinking about finances. Map it out and think how you are going to be paying for your training. There are so many ways to pay for trainings, including loans and scholarships. And I also have a full video explaining how you can pay for your flight training, including scholarships in the iCard. I will link it right here. It's on my channel, so look at it and find out how you will be paying for your flight training. Once you have all this mapped out, you are one step closer to your pilot training. 
once you've applied for your flight school, they've accepted you and you have your finances in line, you can start applying for your visa. The visa to come here will have a visa interview. So when you go to this visa interview, they are looking for you to prove that you can pay for your training. So you will have to take your financial proofs like your loan statements or bank statements, all that with you to your visa appointment and show them and prove to them that you can indeed pay for this. Otherwise, you will not be getting your visa. So get your finances in line before you start applying for this. Before you start planning to leave to the US, I want you to do a few things. Apply for a computer number. This will make your conversion procedure so much quicker. If you already have this with you, it's going to make it so much easier. So just apply for it before you go, okay? Apply for a computer number and also try and complete as many as DTCA written exams that you can. There's like six of them, so try and complete as many as you can. If you cannot complete a few, that's okay, that's totally fine. You can come back and complete it, but if you can complete as many as you can, it'll be that much less problems for you when you come back and it'll be that much quicker. So try and get these out of the way before you leave to the US. So after you get to the US, I want to give you a few tips. Make sure your accommodation is to your liking. Make sure it's close enough to your school and whatever else you need is available in your accommodation. Make sure it is safe and it's not broken and the locks are good and the fan works or the AC works. Whatever it needs, make sure it's working. If it's not before you sign any lease agreements or any rental agreements, just make sure it's okay. And if it's not, get it changed before you start signing things. Another thing you want to be doing when you get to the US is open a bank account. The sooner you do it, the better. Opening a bank account will give you access to a lot of things here. Even if you have a foreign travel card, it'll be so much easier to have a bank account here as well. So try and open a bank account as soon as you can. All you will need is your I-20, your passport, your visa, all that stuff, and they'll open a bank account for you. So just take these documents to a bank and open it up. They're pretty good banks. I really like Chase. I do also like Wells Fargo and Bank of America, I've heard, is pretty good too. Chase is my recommendation. I would suggest go to Chase and open a student account as soon as you can. My next most important tip for you guys is to get a SIM card. If you did already buy it while you were back home, come here and get a SIM card as soon as you can. You of course need to talk to people and if you ever get lost, this is going to save you. So get a SIM card as soon as possible. Next, you might need a car. So in the US, everybody has their own cars and that is how people transport and commute. Car might be the best option, but if you cannot afford it, there are obviously buses and public transport. So figure out what you are going to do, how you're going to get to your school, back to the grocery store, all that, map that out. Your bus routes and all that. Or if you're getting a car, start your search for a car as soon as possible. Now that you're all settled in, let's get to business, your flight training. So here's how your flight training will go in the US. First, you'll be getting your private pilot certificate, then your instrument rating, then your commercial pilot certificate, and maybe a multi add-on. Depending on if you want to get it here or not, this will be an optional step. So this is how your training will progress. And to complete each of these certificates and ratings, you will need ground hours, flight hours, and after that, you will need to take a written test and a check ride. And in a check ride, this will be your final test where you will get your certificate and it will include an oral portion and a flight portion. So you will be tested on both these areas. So it will involve a lot of studying, not just flying. So prepare yourself for all this. And if you join Avion, the private pilot ground, we will finish that off. And so when you come here, you will only be left with the 35 hours of flight and your instructor will go over a few things that you need to know ground wise. And we will be talking about how to prepare for the written test also. So once you get here, you can get ready for your written test and get that out of the way as well. So if you're serious about aviation career and if you're looking at doing it in the US, do yourself the biggest favor and look at Avion and join it. So you can find it at joinavion.com. This will be the best thing you will be doing for your aviation career. Trust me, 
I have been there and I have wanted something like this, but I did not have this option. And that is why I created this for you guys. So you guys have an option that'll help you out and help you succeed at the cheapest cost possible and gives you the best instruction. After the private certificate, once you're doing the rest of your training, I want you to keep the DGCA conversion requirements with you. Be familiar with it. Even if your flight school is specially catering Indian students or if it's just a general flight school, I want you to keep this with you and be familiar with it. Understand what is required for conversion. It is not your flight school's responsibility. They can be negligent. They can turn a blind eye to it, but you will be required to have these hours when you go back. So I will have it linked down below in the description, a PDF which says DGCA conversion requirement. Take a look at it and follow those and make sure you meet those R requirements. While you're training, make it your responsibility to follow through that and you have all the R's. So biggest tip for you guys, use that to the best of your abilities. And this will help in your DGCA conversion when you go back to India. And this is going to save you so much time and money so much money if you don't have one of these things you will have to come back here and fly or you'll have to do it there so it'll just add on to your expenses so just do yourself a favor and follow that list there you go you are all filled in for your pilot training how it is going to happen what you should do to get here and how your conversion is going to go and you are well prepared for everything if this video helped you out in any way or form give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want more such videos i have so many aviation videos on this channel and you can check it out subscribe and you'll get more of this and if you're interested in being a pilot and training in the u.s definitely look into joinavion.com i will have few of my aviation videos link here and here and you can subscribe on my face right here that being said i will see you in my next video until then signing off lightning girl bye